Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy, and welcome to my Let's Play of Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Rescue Team DX! A different take on Pokemon with a bigger focus on story and on the Pokemon themselves. The moves and mechanics would be familiar to a veteran of the series, but with more aspects like movement and position taken into account during a battle. Which is something that I hear a lot of people wanting out of the main games too. This particular installment is chronologically the first in the series, as it's a remake of the original Pokemon Mystery Dungeon all the way back on the Game Boy Advance and DS. Out of all the Pokemon spin-off series in the Poke Multiverse, this is my personal favorite one. And I'd been wanting to play this for you for a very long time. So long, in fact, that I was going to go through with Blue Rescue Team as a Let's Play at the beginning of the year, and mere days before that was about to happen, this remake got announced. I was so beyond certain that this was a dead series, and no Pokemon spinoff had ever been remade before, so it caught me with egg in my face. But here we are now, and I'm all the happier for it. If there's anything that deserved to be revived with such a heartfelt remake, it's this. I played the original version many, many times over the years, and I tried out this version until I understood the new mechanics. I chose not to spoil absolutely everything about this new version, so that we can marvel at the new visuals here for the first time together. I hope you'll join me on this new adventure in this new world, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. First of all, on this main menu screen, they added an admire illustration button. By holding minus, we can look at these HD redrawings of the original concept art from Mystery Dungeon that was seen in those menus all those years past. This remake is visually such a love letter to the original, and this is just the start of what we're gonna be seeing. Of course, we're going to be starting a new game. What else do we do at the first episode of these things? Welcome. This is the portal that leads to the world of Pokémon. But before I can let you through, I have several questions for you. I want you to answer them sincerely. Are you ready? Okay. You didn't give me a chance to answer that sincere- Okay. Let the interview begin. How quickly do you respond to a text? I never imagined the day I met God, this is what he'd be asking me. <laughs> Let it be known, every time you leave somebody unread, God is judging you. These questions are random out of a pool of no fewer than 50 and the answers determine an awful lot about what you're going to be doing. This might mean that you can take this test multiple times and answer truthfully while still getting different results, because some questions just don't have answers that count towards certain attributes. This also means that your questions are going to be very different from mine. I am so glad I didn't have to answer this one! Usually I'm very punctual, but I think this is closer to what I'm like friend brought over something you'd forgotten. How do you thank your friend? Say thank you regularly, say thanks for the joke, say thanks, but be cool. We know I'm not cool. I'd probably make a joke uh, self-deprecating or just in general being like, whoops, whoops, silly me. Do you tend to laugh a lot? <laughs> I already answered that before I even got through the sentence. Can you sincerely thank someone when you feel grateful? Yeah. Someone calls you weird but funny. How does that make you feel happy? It's like my trademark. Do you like pranks? Yeah. You come across a treasure chest. How do you react? Open it right away. Know it could be a trap. It's going to be empty. I'd probably be pretty cautious when coming across something like that. Are you often late for school or meetings? No. Do you want to play as a boy or a girl? You appear to be the naive type. This quiz can get oddly real. I've seen it call people oddly depressed before. <laughs> Even this caught me off guard. <laughs> you are highly curious and you love rare things. You have a cheerful and carefree attitude, which should make things fun for the people around you. I think I know who this is, but you do have one flaw. 
you can be childish. You can never sit still. You're always on the move. You can also be selfish, so you should watch yourself. A naive person like you should be... Skitty! <laughs> I thought that was gonna be meow. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, so this already, I didn't think we were gonna be getting into this so fast, is a new feature in this HD remake. Originally, some Pokemon were gender locked. Skitty could only be available to girls. Not the case here. You can be anyone that you wanna be. Should you answer no to this? You're not locked to whatever it tells you as you've been traditionally. You're free to choose any Pokemon that you like. How about we talk about these choices? Bulbasaur! We'll introduce these game mechanics to us. A Pokemon has a type that determines its strengths and weaknesses. Moves of the same type as the Pokemon itself hit for 1.5 times as much damage. Each one has a move pool that's different from the rest, and they each have passive abilities. In this case, I'll be showing you the ability that they will always have when making this choice here today. Why can't the main series do this? Why have useless abilities? I'm so sick of catching klutz golets with perfect natures and perfect IVs, knowing they could be so much better. Anyway, every Pokemon has a few stats. HP is your health, attack is physical attack strength, defense is your defense against physical attacks, special attack and special defense are the same, but for attacks that are like beams or various indirect means of attacking, and speed is turn frequency, sometimes allowing for double movement. I'm not listing what Pokemon's base stats are here because it's not all that important in the long run. Leveling up and gaining stats that way isn't all that radically different for each Pokemon, and there's better ways of getting strong than by merely leveling up, and of course, we'll be getting to that. The only thing related to base stats that I think is important to know is that the rules in the main series don't apply. Every single one of these tiny little unevolved Pokemon have mammoth stats. The actual most important thing to know about Pokemon in these circumstances are their move pools. That one and a half times damage multiplier for the move being the same type as the Pokemon is the largest damage additive in the entire game, even more so than type effectiveness. As for Bulbasaur here, it excels its status ailments, and it learns Razor Leaf at a low level, being a strong physical grass-type move with a high critical hit chance. It also gets Growth as a nice buffing move, which is just good to do regularly when a tough situation is coming. Bulbasaur is the only starter that's born as a dual type, and this means dual same type attack bonuses right from the beginning. Status moves are also a huger deal than usual, so be on the lookout for those, and wouldn't you know it, Bulbasaur's got the ability to use those as well. As a downside of all grass type starters, flying is a bad type to start out weak against. Bulbasaur is a pretty well-rounded grass type with a little bit of everything. Shikorita is a support player with Razor Leaf right at the start. Between Reflect and Self-Healing, it's a good partner who's got your back. It might appear like Poison Powder is one of its bread and butter moves due to how defensive it is, but Poison works very differently here, and I would not describe it as a good move for you to have at all. Another noteworthy move is Ancient Power, as this has a chance of buffing all of its stats and can be fun when it pulls it off, though this is luck-based. Charmander has great attacking moves, but is limited to just normal dragon and fire through leveling up. It gets Dragon Rage at a low level, which is fixed damage and can be helpful in clearing out regular enemies without using up moves that are cared about a lot more. All three Fire Starters are noteworthy for being the only starter Pokemon to learn Heat Wave. Though they don't learn it until late, it's an extremely good move, easily one of the strongest in this world, attacking entire rooms of enemies at the same time. Alternatively, Flamethrower is another reason to love Fire types. It's a long-ranged attack with a chance to burn and lower the enemy's attack power. Another trait shared among all fire types is the ability to walk on lava. No other type can do this without some sort of drama. Cindy Quill doesn't have as good of moves as Charmander, but all around high stats. Kind of outclassed, but smokescreen can be nice for lowering the accuracy of larger enemies. Bear this Torchic. It's on the frail side and doesn't have much in the way of status, but learns flying, ghost, and even rock moves to exploit weaknesses quite well. Also gets the good fire type moves like you would expect. Squirtle 
is all around good at offense and defense. It's able to avoid many fights altogether thanks to having long range water attacks at low levels. As a blanket statement, being a water type kinda sucks for a while due to the types you're up against, but I find it makes late game stuff less grindy if you already have a strong water type at your disposal. This is because water types have the ability to, yep, walk on water. And historically speaking, people who've been able to walk on water have been pretty damn good. Ice Beam is a strong move that most water types tend to get. It attacks from far away and a lot of strong Pokemon are weak against it. Blizzard, however, is the real prize. This is an ice type version of Heat Wave hitting multiple foes at the same time and is definitely a move to keep on your radar. Totodile is a Squirtle with more focus on physical attacks and learns more varied moves leveling up, such as the stronger crunch compared to bite, some ice moves, and even one fighting move. Same benefits of water types apply, and it's blessed with Ice Fang, which has a chance of flinching and freezing. Can cause enemies to just not move for a while. Mudkip is the bulkiest of the waters and has awful moves. All of its best moves for the main campaign are learned in the first 10 levels. And even that's kind of sad because Water Gun has less range than Bubble. Mudslap is okay, but it doesn't affect the mountain of flying types everywhere. Then it just learns mere garbage for so long. Rely on other methods of learning moves for this one, because that's all it's got. I think this was intended as the tanky starter, as eventually grass becomes its only weakness. I'm sorry, bud. I don't like you. Pikachu! One of the three god tiers! Static is a candidate for best starter ability there is, paralyzing absolutely any Pokemon at all except for electric types and Pokemon with limber for their ability. Such a wide variety get affected by this if they come near you. Pikachu is known for its speed, and having a drastically higher speed stat than your opponent means getting to attack twice in a row. Pikachu also gets agility, though this doesn't help with attacking speed, solely movement speed. It learns Thunderbolt to hit in a circle all around itself, Discharge hits everywhere, and combine that with agility, it's a machine, it's spreading around damage before anyone can even get close to it. Never mind all the paralysis if they do. Remember how I said that same time attack bonus and status moves are everything? Yeah, it learns Nuzzle, and it can outright stun lock most foes with it while doing a little bit of damage. All of this, and it's only weak to ground. Practically every strong enemy is weak to electric too. It's Thor the Thunder God. Machop doesn't have any gimmicks. Just has really high stats, lots of fighting moves, and guts for its ability to make those attacks even beefy. It has status moves, but they're all flexes for making those fighting moves hit harder. Focus energy for higher critical hits, leer for lowering defense, or foresight to be able to hit ghost types anyway. Almost every strong Pokemon has some sort of flying type move, so that's its main drawback. Good at what it does, though has a strong weakness as well. Meowth has little variety in the way of leveling up moves, but unconventional strengths. Pickup can sometimes give it free items after every floor, and Payday allows it to make money out of nothing. Fury Swipes is the real boon. Two to five hit moves are great here, and combining that with Screech, it shreds through any man or furniture alike. It's so powerful at that one thing that it definitely can make up for it not having as much variety. Nasty Plot's also worth noting because it learns a lot of special moves through TMs. It's for those who like a different kind of experience with unique strengths. Cubone! Doesn't start out all that impressive, but give it time and it'll surprise you. It learns some very, very good moves, and even that feels like an understatement. Bone Meringue is a factually better version of Fury Swipes. Multi-hit moves are good, multi-hit with long range is even better, and add the same type attack bonus on that with some types being weak to it, and you got a powerhouse here. There's also an ability we're gonna be running into later that buffs multi-hit moves for the entire party, and that stacks beautifully with Cubo. What's bizarre is that Cubo learns practically every good special move there is. Test out everything you can on it. I guarantee you nine times out of 10, this will learn it. That sort of contradicts the definition of guarantee, but you understand what I mean. Teaching its special moves can make it situationally good in dungeons where electric types lurk, thanks to that lightning rod ability. In fact, it can get so powerful from this, it might just be an exception to ground type moves being its best option. 
I consider Cubone the second god tier. Say aye aye. Back. Uses water and psychic moves, but is otherwise pretty offensively limited. Fury Swipes is good, but with no t same type attack bonus, it's just not as good at using it as Meow. Psyduck's main identity is negating weather effects with Cloud Nine. I'd argue it's more on the defensive side due to that and learning a lot of status moves. And I would recommend Calm Mind as soon as you can get your hands on it, but I just don't think it's that spectacular. Eevee has poor moves at first, but becomes amazing late game. This is probably one of the hardest ones to use starting out, but has a few strong benefits to outweigh its difficulty and make it kind of a middle of the road Pokemon. One is adaptability, buffing its normal type moves even further, making up for the fact that its same type attack bonus moves won't be hitting for any type weaknesses. The other is that it evolves into so many different kinds of Pokemon. Now, this sounds obvious, but I swear I ain't going senile on you yet. <laughs> Let me explain. For one, evolution works differently in the Mystery Dungeon verse. We'll be getting to that when we get to that, but I want to mention it because that might make evolution not seem like an obvious benefit right away. The other is that Eevee is so flexible because even though Mystery Dungeon Rescue Team took place during Generation 3, this remake adds any evolutions or pre-evolutions that that Pokemon has access to as of Generation 8. So as a result, Eevee is able to evolve into all eight of its current evolutionary forms. Out of all of them, I probably would still recommend Vaporeon or Jolteon the highest, but the options are still there. A lot of these Pokemon sound very fun. Though I think I'm just gonna go with what fate gave me. Skitty. This is the final step. Who would you like to have as a partner? Your partner may be any Pokemon that does not share a type with you. In my case, Eevee and Meowth have been removed from the board. I'm gonna be real with you. I've been here for 12 minutes thinking this over and eliminating choices one by one. And I won't lie, I would, I would like to have something good, but I'd also like to have something exciting that would be interesting to watch. I don't wanna have a Pokemon like Mudkip over here that just learns a few good moves and then it's done. I also thought about this from an angle of what Pokemon am I unlikely to have a chance to ever use again? And as much as I like Charmander, they put him in every damn game. <laughs> to a lesser extent, same goes for you, Squirty. I am Skitty, and our partner is... Trico! Focuses on being a strong attacker and absorbing foe's HP, rather than using status or support like its grass-type brethren. Aiding in its mission, it's lightning fast compared to other grass type Pokemon and can sometimes get off double attacks where they wouldn't. Dragon Breath is one of its starting moves and it's a good one indeed. This move hits from a distance away, can sometimes paralyze, and is virtually unresisted by the types of Pokemon that inhabit this world. Whenever grass isn't a good option, it's an easy backup plan. All around, solid attacker, and not at all what you'd expect from a grass type. Skitty! Notice how I haven't listed the third god tier yet? That's cause it's this cute little adorable god of destruction. It has cute charm, which is even better than static because it hits everything except Pokemon with Oblivious. Gender is purely a cosmetic thing in this universe and is not a game mechanic at all. It can also learn to track to just shut down an annoying foe without needing to be attacked first with that ability. Adding to just being able to immobilize whatever it wants, it learns double slap early on in a game where two to five hit moves are super strong. Being a normal type, it's expected to learn moves of all different types, including the fairy type and even ice beam for long range hits, thunderbolt to hit in a circle, or even blizzard to attack an entire room. Get it if you're looking for something different or if you're just tired of Skitty being trash in the main games. We have an awful lot of power over Trico's destiny. We can choose if they are a boy or a girl. If a Pokemon has a gender difference, such as Pikachu having the heart on the end of its tail, it'll be shown based on this choice. Otherwise, not a lot of examples of it. I think I'm gonna go for girl on this one. I like the idea of having a female Trico because you don't usually think of Trico as female because there aren't very many of them. Or male skitties, for that matter. Uh, 
Wow, we're just two peas in a pod, aren't we? Oh my god, you're a grass type. We also can nickname Trico, and originally I wasn't going to do this until I was convinced to the contrary by every single person that I mentioned it to that you would all hate it if I didn't nickname my Pokemon and told me that I really should put some of my creativity into this journey. So you know what? We're doing it. Okay, the name that I've come up with, I'm really, really happy with. Willow. It's a female name and a plant name and... You know, Trico's also a wood gecko, so it lives in trees. It's got a lot of layers, and I just think it fits very well. Yeah. It's all right for a nickname? I'd say so. I feel really confident that this is the name that you belong with. Let's go. Okay, we're all set. Let's get you into the world of Pokemon. Go for it. Where am I? Am I dreaming this? I feel a pleasant breeze. I hear a voice from somewhere. I wonder who it is. I excuse me. Please, wake up. Come on, wake up! You're finally awake! Great! Where is this? You were passed out here. I'm glad to see you awake. I'm Willow. Happy to meet you. And you are? I've never seen you around before. Huh? You say you're a human. But you look like... a normal skitty in every way. <laughs> I like how the very first thing that he checks is the feet to see if they're paws, and then it's like, oh my god, wait, do I have a tip? <gasps> That's exactly how I'd react if I turned into a Pokemon. <laughs> I've turned into a Skitty. But why? I don't remember anything. Um, you're kind of weird. Your name? What's your name? My name? That's right. My name is... As for a nickname for our main protagonist... My real name is Emil, and I could go with that. Though I kind of don't like self-inserting my name verbatim, and I wanted to go with something more original. Another name that I considered was Nova, to go with kind of the space theming that Skitty has with the moon on its face and the fairy-type moves that it learns. I thought that was kind of a fitting name. Another one I thought of was Blake, because, you know, half human, half cat. But the name that I settled on has me going in undercover. I don't want to give away my real name. You never know what could be going on in the world and what that could spell. So you know what? Emil's going in under some deep camo. Camo meal, that is! <laughs> Another name with many layers goes along with the plant theming that we have with Willow. Yeah, we're Willow and Chamomile. I am disgusting. Oh. Hamamil's your name. Well, isn't it a funny name? Says the person who's also named after a plant. Somebody, please help me. Huh? I hear shouts from over there. What's wrong? It's horrible. My Caterpie fell into a cavern. My poor baby. What? A huge fissure opened in the ground and my Caterpie fell in. He's too young to crawl out by himself. When I went to get my baby, Pokemon suddenly attacked me. Huh? You were attacked? By other Pokemon? They must be enraged by the fissure and are out of control. That's what I think. 
I'm not strong enough to fend off those wild Pokemon. What will become of my baby? Oh, what am I to do? Oh dear, oh dear. This sounds bad. We have to go help. Our first excursion into the wilds found us, Tiny Woods. Could this be a mystery dungeon? It is, it's a mystery dungeon. A mystery dungeon is truly a mysterious place. Hmm, that explains why they call it a mysterious dungeon in Japan. I'm on to you. The layout and items change every time you enter. You can proceed by using the stairs, but you'll have to find the stairs first. And you remember that Butterfree said that Pokemon and the dungeon attack, right? If necessary, we have to fight. Let's do our best, Chamomile. We're allowed to move with the left stick, or you can also use the D-pad, which is what you should be using. This is a Joy-Con grip game, people. Whenever you get close to a Pokemon, you can tap the A button to automatically select the best attack for the situation. In that case, uh, wow tutorial, a whole step late, weren't ya? <laughs> Yeah, so you automatically select the correct attack. The AI is pretty good. It operates on the same rules that the wild Pokemon do as well. Uh, Fake Out's able to attack from a whole square away, even diagonally, and it's just really good. Uh, there I use Charge Beam being super effective there. If you ever want to look and see what your moves are, just go into the status menu. And on page two of this, Fake Out. This attacks from two tiles away and can also make the enemy flinch. Echoed Voice is a normal type move, so this is definitely gonna be one of our bread and butter moves, and it goes up every single time that we use it in, re in, rap in uh, repeated succession. Charge Beam uh, is a special electric attack that can boost our special attack up until the end of the floor or until stepping on a wonder tile. That's how status moves generally work. Any kind of buff will go away when the floor is over, so be mindful of that. Grass Knot is a grass type move that does greater damage the heavier the opponent is. We can also take a look at Trico's moves, but I think I went over these in pretty good detail already. Quick Attack is just two tiles away without the flinch chance. Um, absorb, you know, I've gone over that. Iron Tail's not all that useful. I wouldn't see myself using that in too many situations, but hey, good thing I'm not Willow. That's up to me. Willow can do what she wants, I can do what I want. We found the stairs, so let's go on. You, yellow, teammates, green, items, blue. Ayla, strong, enemy Pokemon, red, stairs white. Wormple, dead! <laughs> Kill them in his sleep, and no less. That is hardcore. Poke is the money of this world. You can use it to buy when you want to buy something. God, kill them in his sleep. <laughs> Not on Christmas, though. No, I, I can't be as extreme as George Washington. That's a little too much for me to handle. Orenberries are amazing. Pick these up whenever you see them. Even if your inventory's full, drop something on the ground, you can pick it up later, eat the Orenberry, pick up the thing that you want more than it. Orenberries restore 100 HP. That's more HP than you're ever going to have for a very, very long time. They can last, they can be useful pretty much for the entire game, and that's not even the best thing that they do. Upon eating them, your max HP is going to go up by 10 for the rest of the dungeon. You might as well eat it, take that buff in the long term, and then just keep it going. It was saying that, that if we tap L, we go into auto mode, which we have this bubble around us, but when you get close to a Pokemon, fight your own damn battles. You you can't be expected to let the computer do everything for you. You gotta tap A for that to happen. You can't just set it all to one button. Uh, kids these days, you know, they always say that they make games too hard nowadays, and this just proves it, man. Such high difficulty in video games nowadays. So much harder than the originals. Uh, this over here is a max ether that restores the power points of a move. Every move has finite usage, and that's a thing that restores the usage to one move. Uh, we're just gonna keep attacking here. Uh, we did a fake out there successfully, allowing for a combo kill. Uh, oh, uh, sleepless status. Can't fall asleep, but hey, can't fall asleep, can't have a nightmare. Uh, where's off when we go to the next floor? I'm willing to bet that means, yes, you were using uproar, weren't you? I didn't quite catch it at the bottom. Trico using Dragon Breath there, just showing us up. Uh, doubly showing me up, I missed, and you just, uh, you didn't need me at all. Keep going. And I have to say, right away, I love this game visually. Uh, a Rostberry? Huh, all right, well that heals burns, we don't really have this. I understand, not the most technically impressive, but I don't think every game has to be. Why I like it so much in spite of that is that it's such a love letter to that official artwork from days of old that I showed you remastered earlier, and it just made the entire game look that way. This is how I imagine these adventures looking like as a kid, and seeing it all play out like this on screen is a dream come true for me. 
I would take this gladly over something more technically impressive or with more realistic textures or whatever. This is better than okay. It's everything I could have dreamed of. We'll go on to the next floor after clearing everything out. <laughs> Mommy, where are you? We came to rescue you. Huh? Your mom's waiting. Let's get you out. Okay. My baby's safe. I'm sorry, I, I don't know how I could ever thank you properly. Oh, that's okay. It has been dangerous lately with sudden quakes and fissures like that one. It was great to find your little boy unharmed. Please, may I have your names at least? I'm Willow. And this is Chamomile. He's, uh, staring at me adoringly. Those sparkly eyes, it's a little embarrassing. Don't, just because little kids are lame doesn't mean you have to take their lameness so personally when they look up to you. Just take it, come on. But this doesn't feel bad either. It's like I'm here, yeah, take it, come on. Little kids being lame is what's so charming about them, let's be real. Helping Pokemon in trouble might be a good experience. Thank you, Willow and Chamomile. I know it isn't really enough, but this is a token of our thanks. Please accept it. Not enough my hind end with a tail growing out of it now! A tiny reviver seed revives you if you fall in a dungeon instantaneously and to full health. That is a priceless item that you can never have enough of. Petra Berry restores poisoning, which is a surprisingly dangerous status here. And 500 poke. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you for helping. You're very tough. I was sure impressed. So what are you gonna do? Do you have any plans? Whoa, asking me for a date already, huh? Listen, Chamomile. If you don't have a place to stay, you should come with me. Whoa, skipping the first date and going straight into living together? Uh. Man, no wonder Pokemon reproduce in 128 steps. Well, this is the place. Wow. I can't explain, but I'm happy. I'm a human being, but I like this place. I feel weirdly happy. It might be an instinct thing for Pokemon. Maybe this is what it feels like to want to wag your tail. It doesn't matter, I'm happy. Maybe I feel that way because I'm a skitty. Oh, uh, chamomile, uh, you're impressed, aren't you? I thought so. I thought this would make a good place for you to live, chamomile. I was sure you would like it. This is your mailbox. They deliver mail from other Pokemon here. Many Pokemon are suffering from these natural disasters, just like the fissure Caterpie fell into. There have been all sorts of natural disasters recently. I want to do good. I want to help Pokemon like that. I want to help make the world a safer place for Pokemon. So, um... Well, I saw how good you were when we rescued Caterpie. Uh, would you like to form a rescue team with me? I think we could become the world's number one rescue team, Chamomile. What do you think? Eh, not really my speed. <laughs> oh no, uh, please! Chamomile, I'm sure that we would make a first-class rescue team together. Please, will you form a rescue team with me? Oh, I'm doing this for you, Willow. I feel so bad when you look at me like that. Okay, done deal. From now on, Chamomile, we're partners in our rescue team. I'm so glad. The team's name is... I haven't decided on one. It doesn't really roll off the tongue well. Uh, Here, let me help you. Team Excitements. <laughs> These default names. <laughs> There's several of them, complete with your own trademark, earthbound, don't care button. Team Allies. Team, team Pokemon. Team Spec Specs. Team Lucky Pals. Team Grit. Ooh, Team Grit. Team Treasure. Team Wonder. Team Latfoot. Team Wisdom. Team Courage. 
Team Seedlings. Ah, yes, the Triforce as we know it. <laughs> Wisdom, Courage, and Seedlings. Team Pokemon. Team Fluffings. Team Sparkly Day. Back in the day, the, there were two official names for this team. Team Pokemon and Team Go-Getters, depending on the sources that you looked at, whereas now there's all sorts of ones. However, I have a name that I think goes pretty well with the theming that we have going on. We have similar names, and I think this is more Willow's brainchild than my own, so we're gonna go with Team Rosethorn. And don't worry, if you ever have second thoughts on your team name, your partner's name, anything at all, it can be changed any time in the settings menu. Sure is nice of those game developers to consider all those little kids who would have older siblings that would tell them, yeah man, Team Foreplay is a really cool name, you should name it that. Rosethorn. I like it, it's a good name, it's perfect! Oh, and one more thing. I wanted to wear this on the day I got started on a rescue team. I have two of them, so let's put them on. Oh my god, it's red and you're blue, they're such good colors. It looks Gaia Green Trico, yes. I do look really good in it. It's, it's so good, I haven't even seen what I look like from the front. This is the most important aspect in choosing your partner and what you're going to be. Here is what all of the starter Pokemon look like with their scarves on. Choose wisely. You wear it well, Kevin. Yeah, I do, I'll say so. Don't you feel focused? Like we're on the same team together. Rescue Team Rosethorn. Let's do good, starting tomorrow. And that is how Chamomile and Willow began their careers together as a rescue team. Mm -hmm.